So this man, he believed in Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah cured him. فَأَتَ الْمَلِكِ فَجَلَسَ إِلَيْكَ مَا كَانَ يَجْلِسِ So he, would, he went to the king like he would normally sit with the king and the king asked him, فَقَالَ لَهُ الْمَلِكِ مَنْ رَدَّ عَلَيْكَ بَصَرَكَ Who gave you back your sight? قَالَ رَبِّي This man, again, alhamdulillah, he believed. Look at the da'wah. The young boy went to the rahib, the monk. The monk gave the young boy da'wah. The young boy gave this man da'wah. Now he's in the presence of the king. The king saying, who gave you back your sight? This man said, my lord. Look at this arrogant, this jabbar, this tyrant, this anid. So the king said to him, Do you have a lord other than me? Look, he claimed lordship for himself. Disbeliever in Allah Azza wa Jal. Arrogance, haughtiness. He knows that he's not a lord. He can't do anything. That's why he's asking him. Look, even in this story, there's a proof. That's why you don't need philosophy, philosophy to give da'wah. You don't need ilm al-kalam, rhetoric to give da'wah. You can use sound logic to give da'wah. Firstly, no doubt, the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, but likewise, sound logic. Look, the king said, who returned your sight to you? The man, he responded, the muwahid, my lord. He said, do you have a lord other than me? The, the man he responded to him, he said, Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah. My Lord and your Lord is Allah. It makes sense. You just asked me who gave me back my sight. Obviously, you have no control over the universe or my body, which is insignificant in the scheme of everything else. So you can't give me back my sight. So obviously, you, not, you are not my Lord. So my Lord and your Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we need to worship him alone. It's easy. It makes sense. Da'wah, ikhwan, it does, it, when you come with philosophy, you open up doors that leads to all types of confusion. Person giving da'wah to philosophy, through philosophy, he ends up giving da'wah through a means that people utilize to deny, wal-iyadu billah, the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, or to deny qadr or other than that. Or they use certain principles from ilm al-kalam, rhetoric of the people of innovation, that the self, they warned against ijma'an, with consensus. Imam Shafi'i said, my ruling concerning them is that they should be yani, beat and flogged in front of the people upon a, a donkey. Why? Because of the door that they opened, the confusion that they will bring. Showing what? Dawa through text of Quran, Sunnah, and sound logic. So he said to him, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. So the king, like any other tyrant, he, yani he commanded that this man be seized. Look, he went from an intimate friend, companion to the king. When he accepted, he became a muwahid, he became an enemy. Look, like the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ. Muhammad ﷺ, he was amin to the Arab. He was the trustworthy one. They would go to him even for judgments. But when he came to them and he said, say la ilaha illallah, overnight he went from the trustworthy one to being a liar. That's like, you know, you hear some individuals, Naam Allah, and Alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa guides them to the Sunnah. When he was upon innovation, you have people, they were praising him. Oh, there's so and so and so and so. Allah guides them to the Sunnah, they say, no, this person he doesn't know anything. Yesterday you were cheering him like cheerleaders. That's a sign of the people of falsehood. Whenever people embrace the truth, those who are upon falsehood will change. So the king commanded that this man be seized and he started to punish him until due to the, the persecution, this man, he directed them to the young boy. The king said to him, O oh my son, He said, your magic, the king said to the young boy, your magic has reached such a level that you're able to heal, heal the leper, the blind, and you're able to do such and such and such and such. فقال, أحداً, Again, look, Aqeed, the young boy said, I do not cure anyone. The one who cures is Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who heals is Allah. Iman. That is why, alhamdulillah, it doesn't matter who you face. Your religion is your religion. On the way here, we were talking, we were having a discussion with the brothers in the car. And sometimes you hear like some, you know, Islamic personalities in the West, they talk about, you know, living in the West like Muslims didn't live among the non-Muslims before. And they say, you know, we have to, there's certain things we have to compromise and, you know, we have to turn a blind eye to and so on and so forth. This idea that Muslims have never lived in non-Muslim lands, the first migration was to Abyssinia. The king at that time, he wasn't a Muslim. So that refutes that false notion. Secondly, 
when the mushrikun of Quraysh, they wanted the first emigrants to be returned back to them, they tried to incite the king against the Muslims. So they said to the king, it's in Tirmidhi and other than Tirmidhi, Musnad Imam Ahmad, you find the hadith is authentic. So they went to the king and they said, ah, everything else failed. But they said, tell the king about their belief about Isa, Jesus. Because they thought that, ah, the Muslims, they believe that Jesus is what? He's the prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they don't believe he's the son of God. They don't believe that he's God. So these are Christians. Mention this to the king and incite the king against them. That way the king will turn them over to us. When the companions came before the king, they recited the verses of the Quran and explicitly they said, we can only say about Jesus what Allah and his messenger has, have taught us. Can't say nothing else. It doesn't matter if you're in the face of a king or in the face of a pauper. You can only, somebody asks you about, is worshiping graves allowed? It's obligatory upon you to say, no, that this is shirk. What is the greatest command in Islam? The greatest command in Islam is to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla alone without any partners. You can't water down what Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed to you. This is not your deen. This is the religion of Allah Azza wa Jalla. If we change the religion like this, based upon our whims and our desires, and depending upon who we're in front of, then that religion is not the religion that Allah revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the religion that you have concocted and put together. Not the religion that Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed. Fajia bil ghulam. So the boy, the young boy, he said, I'm not able to heal anyone. Rather, the one that heals is Allah. فَأَخَذَهُ فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يُعَذِّبُ حَتَّى دَلَّ عَلَى الرَّاهِبُ So now the king, look, they don't have mercy. They'll even persecute young children. In the world we live today, we see that. Young children being killed, some people, they turn a blind eye. If it's, if it's Muslim children, they, you don't hear them screaming in the media. If it's in certain countries, you know there's outroar. There's concentration camps in China right now. One football player, he, you know, he protested the club, khalas. How can anyone scream about that club after that? If you're a supporter of that club, Aib Alik. Aib, your brothers, imagine you, you're in a concentration camp somewhere. Somebody stands up to defend you. And also, now that person is being yani, boycotted or ostracized, and you support that club. And then we wonder why we're in such a weak predicament. Me and Akhwana Shams, you were in Hyde Park. I said to the people, it was a simple question. Tayyib, okay, you guys are talking about the rulers, the rulers, the rulers. If the rulers, Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them and they implemented the hukm of Allah Azza wa Jal and you, you found, alhamdulillah, that the, the lands were clear in all of the mahakim, in all of the courts, in all of the systems, but then uh, some, uh, an embargo came from various countries and people were hungry. Would you be patient? Would you be patient? We have to ask ourselves, if we were in that predicament, would we, would, we, would we be patient when we see our children? They don't have food, they don't have drink. Because that may be some of the consequences. And the reality with the majority of us, Allah knows best, is, has our iman reached that level? And would we, would we remain firm or would we be looking for ways out and excuses? Or some type of healer? And that's why aqeedah, yes, look, Throughout this story, you'll see the importance of correct belief. And correct belief is that foundation that will, by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, will allow a person to remain firm. Asluha thabitun wa faru'uha fi sama. The roots are deeply established in the earth and the branches, they extend to the sky. Whatever wind will come, inshallah, that tree will remain. But if it's, there's no correct aqeedah, no, or the belief is weak, the iman is weak, then you will see that as soon as a small amount of wind comes, that tree is going to collapse. And tawfiq success is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. It doesn't matter about a great amount of knowledge. Yes, a person, the foundation, look, is knowledge. The young boy, he sat with the what? The monk. And he learned about tawheed. That's the foundation. But then after that correct knowledge, how much are you willing to sacrifice? How much are you willing to give of your time and your effort? Some people, they have a great amount of knowledge, but their sacrifice is minimal. And you find someone, Allah blesses them with a small amount of knowledge, but their sacrifice is great. And Allah is with you through them. Alhamdulillah, you see the sunnah spreading. So again, this king, this tyrant, he punished the young boy. No mercy, even for young children. When it comes to tawheed and shirk. So the faqeel it was said to the young boy, Naam, so he punished the young boy, حَتَّى دَلَّ عَلَى الرَّاهِبِ 
And the punishment was so severe that the young boy, he actually directed them to the monk.